Hey everyone, today I'm going to be showing you how to make an infinite sound called a shepherd tone. So the shepherd tone is a very odd phenomenon. Its pitch sounds like it's forever ascending or descending, but it never seems to get any higher or lower. So I'm going to have you listen to the shepherd tone, and then I'm going to show you how it's made, and how you can make one very simply on a piano or something. And to add to the illusion, I'm going to have a zoom in to a fractal, a pattern that repeats itself indefinitely. Now the shepherd tone is kind of a spooky sound. In fact, it can even cause panic attacks and anxiety attacks. So if you suffer from this, you better mute this next part. And what's interesting about the shepherd tone is you don't just have to have the auditory illusion that you're increasing in pitch. You can actually do the same thing but increase in rhythm instead. Another thing that's interesting about the shepherd tone is you might have noticed that you had some really weird feelings while you were listening to that. And there's actually been a lot of research done on the shepherd tone and how it affects the human emotions. Now what's really cool about the shepherd tone is you can actually make it seem like it's continually increasing in pitch and decreasing in pitch. And you can even make it sound like it's continually increasing and decreasing at the exact same time. So you can play with this really cool shepherd tone noise generator on mynoise.net and watch as I play with these controls how it seemingly changes from continually increasing in pitch and decreasing in pitch. And it sounds like it's happening at the same time even. So how does the shepherd tone work? How do you get something that's continually increasing in pitch, but it isn't actually? This is basically like an auditory Asherian staircase. If you remember the Asherian staircase, it looks like you're continually going upward. Or a lot of people compare it to the barber pole illusion, where it looks like a barber pole is continually moving upward when actually the lines on it are staying in the same spot. The way that the shepherd tone works is by playing notes that are separated by an octave apart. Now when you play notes that are an octave apart, they sound similar in the human ear and it's hard to differentiate between them. And then as you play those notes and it continually increases, you start the pattern over and since they're an octave apart, you can't really tell that they started over. Especially if you make the sound at the beginning kind of softer and then increase it. So let me make a very simple shepherd tone using my piano. And it's not going to be a very good shepherd tone. You're going to be able to tell slightly when I start over. That's because I'm only overlaying two signals at one time. And then to turn it into a shepherd tone, I'm just going to loop back the video and I'm going to slowly increase the sound. And to show you what I mean, I'm going to increase the brightness of one of the videos over the other one so you can tell as I fade in and out with that sound. So what you'll see is my hand fading in and out as the sound gets louder and dimmer for that specific clip.
And what's cool, even on this short little piano clip, you can also get the decreasing tone by playing it backwards. So when you do it with just a single video clip like this, it's easy to see how you can continually get this increase in pitch, but you can also see how it's just because you started over one video. But it's harder to tell when you overlap more octaves together. So the more you put together, the harder it is to tell anything apart. For example, here's a lot more notes all played together, but visually you'll be able to see when the notes die out. Hey everyone, thanks for watching another episode of The Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet. And also you can click the bell so that you can be notified when I release my latest videos. And check out theactionlab.com for the Action Lab experiment boxes and experiment book. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.